Okay, in this video we're going to use input and variables to make a repeated shape, but a repeating shape that has things that change within it, and you'll see how this works. So I'm going to go to New File, I'm going to go File, I'm going to Save As, and I'm going to call this Input and Variables in Shapes. Not the snappiest name, but it explains what we're doing. As in the previous ones, I'm going to start by importing Turtle. But I'm going to do something slightly different. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask a question. So I'm going to say size equals int, which means integer, brackets, input, speech marks. How many sides do you want your shape to have? Question mark. I opened one bracket, so I need to close, sorry, open two brackets, so I need to close two brackets. You need to make sure you've got the same number of brackets at each side, otherwise it'll cause problems later on. Now if I run this, you'll see, it asks me how many sides you want your shape to have. And I can just type a number in, so if I type three in, it will now store the three as sides. So every time sides comes in later, sides will be worth three. Sides is a variable. It's something that changes each time we run the program or can change each time we run the program. But at the moment it's not doing anything with it so we need to make use of that. So we're going to make another for i in range loop. So for i in range. Now in the brackets, spell it correctly as well, in the brackets we normally put the number that we wanted to go to. But this time we want it to change. So instead of writing the number in, we're going to write in sides. So if we put 3 here, this will be worth 3. If I put 7 here, this will be worth 7. The distance that it goes can be the same. So we can say turtle.forward100, turtle.right. Now, if I put a number in here, it doesn't matter what I type here, it's still going to change by the same angle, so we're still I'm going to get the same shape, just potentially partly incomplete. All polygons have a total angle of 360, so to work out the sides, you just do 360 divided by the number of sides. So for a triangle, 360 divided by 3 gives you 120. For a square, 360 divided by 4 gives you 90. So all we have to do in here is write 360 divided by sides, because remember we can still use our number here, and close brackets. Now if I run this module, it will ask me a question. It will say, how many sides do you want your shape to have? I'm going to press 3. It's hiding behind here a little bit, which isn't terribly helpful. Let's pull this across a bit so we can see it a bit more clearly. Let's run that again. So you can go run, run the module. How many sides do you want your shape to have? I'm going to say three. And you can see it draw the three sides of our shape. If I go back and I run the same program again, and this time I say seven, You'll see it draws me a seven-sided shape this time. And the reason this works is because each time it's doing the number of sides that I've inputted here, and then it's working out the angle by doing 360 divided by the number of sides. Now, if I want to make this a little bit more interesting, one thing I can do is I can add a second question. I can say length. So I can say length equals integer input. How long should sides be. Again, I opened with two brackets, so I need to close the two brackets. We've now got a new variable called length, so we can take that 100 out of there and we can write length in. If I now run that module, press OK to minimize that so you can see what's going on. It says how many sides do you want your shape to have? I'm going to press, let's say, 5 this time. Make this a bit smaller so you can actually see what's happening got a second question beneath it that says how long should the sides be. So let's make them a bit bigger, let's make them 200. Let's press enter. And you can see it's drawn the shape, potentially a little bit too big, although you can actually expand this window down to the bottom of it. So any piece of information where we want to use a number can be replaced with a variable. This int, this integer bit, allows it to be a, a full number. 
that can then be applied into here. So if we wanted to make, I guess we can make the next one, we could say um, number of shapes equals an integer input. We could say how many shapes do we want. If we do that, we'll need to make a new loop here. So we can say for i in range number of shapes. Number of shapes looks strangely long and hasn't got any spaces in. And the reason is you can't have any gaps when you're creating a variable. It's got to be written all as one word. And variables are always written in lowercase. If you want it to be clearer, you can put underscores in. Just remember, if you put them into one side, you need to put them into the other. Now, we want this to repeat, but we want the shape to be drawn within it, so we need to indent all of that. So I'm going to highlight it and press tab. And this time, when I run the module, I'm just going to minimize this so it's out of the way. Shrink this down a bit so you can see what's going on a bit more clearly. How many sides do you want your shape to have? Let's do a square this time. We'll do four. How long should the sides be? Let's say 100. How many shapes do you want there to be? I want there to be three. You'll notice there's a small issue that we've talked about before, which is that it's drawing them all on top of them. So you could go back into your code and add a bit of distance in. So that once it's finished one, it moves along a little bit. So we could say here, turtle dot pen up, turtle dot forward. You could set a distance. You could make that change. I guess you could use a length here, so it's the same. In fact, if you wanted to make sure it was always a slight gap, you could do something like length plus 10, so there's always a slight gap. And then you can say turtle dot pen down. If we run this again, you should see how many sides you want your shape to have. Let's do a square again, so four. How long should the sides be? Let's say 100. So that means that for the gap, it should now be 110. How many shapes do you want? Let's do five. It'll probably go off the page. So there's one, a slight gap. Two, there's three. If we expand this, we should see a couple more appearing here. And four and five. So we can start to use the inputs within Python to make it produce all the polygons we want without having to change the code. All we have to do is run it, complete the questions, and we should get the uh, shape or design that we're after.